100 grams of carbs in one sitting to impact insulin resistance in a positive way, how could this even be possible? I mean, it seems like when you think about it, you have one giant swing in glucose, high blood sugar, and insulin. That, that just seems monumentally bad. But there's some relatively new evidence that helps us understand how it could work. Now, I want you to exercise a lot of caution on this. I'm not suggesting that if you're insulin resistant, you go out and you willy-nilly consume 100 grams of sugar from a Snickers bar. But we do need to look at the big picture here. So I'm gonna reference a few studies and I promise it'll make sense. I promise everything will come full circle and you'll have sort of a playbook for this. That's my style. I like to give the science and then we give more of an actual pragmatic approach. So let's go ahead and jump in. But first, I did put a link down below for 25% off Seeds Daily Symbiotic. You've probably heard me talk about them before, but maybe you haven't. It is a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. And when you're looking at glucose modulation, people don't realize that the microbiome plays a ridiculously strong role in glucose modulation. But that, and it's also just really good for the gut, which we should be taking care of anyway. So that link down below is 25% off discount link. Their technology is like head and shoulders above any other brands, which is why I support them. They've been on this channel for shoot, four or five years. So big, strong supporter of this channel and I'm a supporter of them. So that link is in the top line of the description underneath this video. So first, I wanna to touch on something. There was a study that was published in Nutrients and it looked at the baseline three meals per day. So it looked at people on average and it said, okay, if people are eating three square meals a day, that means they're consuming 21 meals per week. But we wanna compare this to different fuel intakes. So what they found is that comparing 21 meals per week to 16 to 20 meals per week, the 16 to 20 meals per week group had a 20% less risk of developing insulin resistance or type two diabetes. Now get this, the 14 to 15 meal per week group, that's roughly two meals per day, that group had a 30% reduced risk of developing insulin resistance or type two diabetes. What am I getting at here? What I'm getting at here is that potentially having larger meals, even with carbohydrates, could be good for insulin resistance. So here's what I'm suggesting based on this literature. If you are at a point where you still are not like insulin dependent or really in a situation with bad insulin resistance, having a big spike is okay as long as you come down. That's where people get confused. They see this number that goes way up. Now, way up is probably the wrong word to say, right? They see this spike that goes up and it scares them because there's a certain level of demonization to having a spike in blood sugar. But it's perfectly normal to have a spike when you consume a large amount of carbs, right? What's most important is, do you come down? So what you wanna do, first of all, if this is something of concern to you, is you wanna eat that large meal with a large amount of carbohydrates and you wanna measure your two hour postprandial glucose. Have you come down in two hours? If you haven't come down in two hours, then let's come back and talk. That's a different situation. But if you have come back down, that means that your body responded in a normal, healthy way. In which case, think about it like this. If you were continually eating lots of meals, even three, four, five, well, you're getting moderate spikes in glucose and then coming down. So your area under the curve is probably similar. However, what's happening here is you're not getting insulin able to come back down as much, right? If you have one big meal or two big meals, insulin comes back down and when insulin is lower, barring that you're in a caloric deficit, you're going to burn more fat, okay? Being in a caloric deficit, you're gonna lose more weight. Being in a caloric deficit while also having insulin low, you'll probably burn more fat, right? So no one's denying the calorie equation here. That is important. But having insulin levels come back and be stable along with that caloric deficit is quite important. Now it's interesting because there was a study that was published in Advances in Nutrition, and this was a large meta-analysis systematic review with 22 randomized controlled trials, 647 participants, and they were looking at meal frequency and weight loss in general. Now I'm gonna spare you the nitty gritty of this study because candidly, I've mentioned it in another video before and I just don't wanna repeat myself on it here for your sake mainly, but let me read you the main quote from this. One meal per day was ranked as the best frequency for reducing body weight, followed by two meals, 
whereas two meals performed best for waist circumference. Well, that actually tells us a lot in that one simple statement. If you consume one meal per day, you're probably gonna lose more weight, probably because of a number of things. The main thing is you're probably not getting 2,500 to 3,000 calories in one meal. Plain and simple. I mean, you're, you're gonna be in a serious caloric deficit and you're gonna lose weight. But did you hear what they said? Two meals per day was best for waist circumference. So with one meal a day, you might lose a lot of weight, but you probably lose some muscle too. And one thing you have to remember for insulin resistance is maintaining that muscle mass is very critical. That muscle mass is your metabolic glucose sink. So the last thing we wanna do is starve ourselves and get us to a point where we maybe reduce weight, but we're also reducing muscle mass. Two meals per day puts you in a really good spot where you're saying, hey, okay, I'm reducing my waist circumference, visceral adipose tissue, abdominal fat, which is an independent marker for problems, right? For metabolic disease and whatnot, especially visceral fat. So based on that, it looks like two meals per day might be really, really good. But we also have to look at appetite. We have to factor that in. I've talked about this in other videos too. There's subjective evidence that says that, hey, when people eat like six or eight meals per day, their perceived hunger is less because they're grazing. But I have reason to believe personally and somewhat evidence-based that having these frequent meals probably isn't really good for type 2 diabetes or insulin resistant. It, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to constantly be grazing when you're dealing with that kind of issue. Having breaks from food seems logical and it makes sense to give your body a rest and digest sort of break. However, appetite is also a big thing. If you're hungry, then you're gonna be more likely to overeat and cause a problem later on. So step one, we gotta get the weight off of you too, because that's gonna be really important. However, what we see is if we look in a pretty hallmark paper in cell metabolism, it basically found that having your calories stacked in the morning in a 45% fashion, 35% with lunch and 20% with dinner, independent of weight loss stuff, let's put all that aside, it had by far the best rankings for appetite. So if you were doing two meals per day, it doesn't need to be like, in like intermittent fasting style. You could have a really large breakfast that yes, has 100 grams of carbs, like I mentioned in the title. It could have 100 grams of carbs with that breakfast if you really wanted to. And then you let your blood sugar and insulin levels come back down to baseline, burn some fat throughout the day, and then have a dinner that's slightly smaller. So it's like, hey, maybe you do two meals per day and you go 60% of your calories with breakfast and then 40% of your calories with dinner. And you're not fasting but you're having a big breakfast where you're satiated, you don't feel like you need to eat and you don't graze throughout the day and then you have dinner. And then you fast overnight and what do you know? It's almost like you've done two fasts in a 24 hour period. One throughout the day and one throughout the night, giving your gut a break, giving your microbiome a break, giving your insulin levels a break, tapping into fat utilization, improving waist circumference, all these things that make sense in the scientific literature, they make sense on paper and they make sense when I'm talking to you about it. So we see it, but for some reason, we still have all these demons inside us that tell us we need to do it a different way. You can have breaks between your meals and it's probably doing you more good than it is detriment. Now, the big thing within this, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, I know I regurgitate this sometimes, a muscle in motion is what matters. So move the body throughout the day and it'll help that glucose excursion. It'll help that glucose uptake into the cell and it will bring those glucose levels down and keep you metabolically healthy and keep the muscle on you. And lastly, even though I mentioned 100 grams of carbs in one sitting could work well in this case, protein should be your primary focus. Protein first, worry about the carbs after that. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.